I am so excited to have my guest with us today, Laura Maria Sensabella. Did I get that right? You did. I mean, it can be Censabella. Censabella. That's, that's the Italian way yes. to say. You think I would know that because I'm Italian, but I don't have the best Italian accent, but I'm developing it. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for being here, fresh from Thank New York, uh, for the West Coast premiere of Paradise, mm-hmm. which you wrote, and it's being presented by Viola Davis and Juvie Productions. Opens this weekend at the Odyssey Theater in Los Angeles until February 17th. Very, very excited to see this this weekend. Can't wait. Yes, and Saturday is um, a red carpet opening. And I will be there. I'm really looking forward to that very, very much. I mean, I'm big into the L.A. theater scene. We talked about that a little bit. Remember mm-hmm. that L.A. theater has actually been very, very good to you. This isn't yes. your first go-around. Yes, I've had workshops at the Pacific Resident Theater, a mm-hmm. um, couple there, and then the uh, um, um, Internet Interact Theater in Los Angeles also, and then um, the ADAA gave me the William Soroyan uh, Human Rights Social Justice Award for my play, Carla Cooks the War. Everybody yes. knows that. But that was a brilliant play. Very briefly, tell us what that was about. That was based on my <laughs> grandmother who worked with the partisans during World War II, and it's about the cost of being a heroine to your family. I'm very interested in a woman's public and private life and how they interface and how they often don't interface. And um, for people who haven't seen it, they they, they need to look it up. Um, It'd be great to bring that one back. Did you ever think about that? I would love to. Yeah, that's terrific. But right now, I know that you're busy with Paradise. Why don't you tell us what is Paradise about? Paradise is about a devout Muslim Yemeni-American girl who's 17 years old, and she's in an inner-city Bronx high school. It is a terrible high school. It's got a D rating, which is just, you know, the lowest. And then it's about her um, science teacher who used to be a Columbia professor. And you don't know why is he teaching in this really dreadful school. So that's kind of a mystery to the piece. It's a mystery she's interested in because uh, she also loves the science that he's teaching. His specialty is the um, biochemistry of romantic love. And so what teenager wouldn't be interested in that? Sounds to me like there's a little bit of a relationship that was brewing. Am I right or no? Yeah, I don't think you can write a love story, I mean, a play about science without a love story. Right, because you like this play in particular weaves together science, love, different cultures, religions, and it weaves it all together to a a very, very interesting story base. How did Viola Davis get involved? Um, My director is Vic Angelo Bullock, who uh, recently produced the film um, Windows on the World uh, with Edward James Olmos and uh, Ryan Guzman. But um, he uh, found out about the play. It was recommended to him. He came to see it in Boston and in uh, New Jersey. And then he loved it, has been championing it, and he brought it to them. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, And the director, Vic... Angelo Bullock, is that correct? Yes. Phenomenal, one of the top. He also directed the Democratic National Convention. He executive produced it, and that was just an incredible convention, and what wasn't it? Uh, I attended, so yes, it was amazing. I had no idea that he did that until I started speaking to you. Mm -hmm. So again, involvement, big guy. How did he get get involved with this project? It's a very unique story. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that's what is attracting so many people to it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a story where a Muslim American girl, a teenager, has the huge part in the piece. And it's also, you know, the scientist is evangelical, former evangelical. So that contrast of someone who has uh, thrown away religion and someone who's still in it, but also how do you honor yourself as an individual? How do you honor your community? I think is a big question for anybody, and particularly if you're a first-generation person. Um, But you don't have to be first-generation to have that question. I mean, America is so individualistic, and how do we honor our families? And uh, Vic got into it because he does tell diverse stories. He has been a champion of that in Hollywood for other people. 
mm-hmm. not necessarily for himself. And um, <clears throat> so he has this incredible credibility because he's championed other people. And this is the kind of story he would champion. And it came to him through another writer that I know from the O'Neill. Yeah, Very player. important storyline, particularly now, you know, when mm-hmm. there's so much going on in our country and there's a lot of divisiveness and um, just a very interesting story. I can't wait to see it because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm dying for the spoiler alert, mm-hmm. which I know you're not going to give me. Yeah, I can't. You know, I there's know some you can't. secrets in the play. She yeah. has a big secret. Really? I can't reveal it. Don't we all? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Don't we all? Tell me a little bit about your background. You were a teacher. Yes. An artist in residence. Uh, yes, for nine years in the New York City public schools. And I ran the gamut from very um, lovely working class or upper middle class neighborhoods to the most difficult neighborhoods. The better you got as a teacher, the more difficult schools they would put you in. Um, I also teach now at the university level as well. In New York yeah. City. In New York City. Whereabouts are you teaching at um, the university level? Uh, the new school for drama. Phenomenal school. We talked about that on the phone. That's one of the, such a creative environment over Mm -hmm. at the new school. Yes. And when you were teaching, uh, you were teaching up in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Um, You were teaching in Manhattan. You were pretty much everywhere, weren't you? I was. And with every ethnic group from Salvadorian to um, any kind of Hispanic to a lot of Arab American children, a lot of Albanian just everything. What was the big takeaway for you when you were teaching, particularly, uh, did a lot of the kids speak English? I mean, what were the giant challenges when you were teaching? Well, if they didn't speak English well, that actually was fantastic because as I was teaching poetry and playwriting, and for the poetry, they would invent the language and they would invent the syntax because they knew some English. So in poetry, you want to have a new way of writing, and they did because of that. Very yeah. interesting, but still yeah. it's difficult. You know, and to go to school you have to know the language where you're learning, correct? Yeah, but again, but you I had, to I work had the luxury it. of teaching the arts. Yeah. Yes, I didn't have to grade them on grammar and mechanics. That's such it's a much unifier. harder. Yeah. Such a unifier, isn't it, the arts? Yes, it is. Any language, it transcends. We were just in Italy where we met uh, some of my relatives for the first time. I didn't even know they existed. Mm-hmm. And I did a little digging and I found out, wow, lots of them are there from my father's side. And when we were there, uh, my cousin, um, Carmela, took us to the theater there, the opera, sort of a blend of opera and theater <clears throat> at the castle, actually, in uh, Mono Cazzotti. It was very fascinating. I didn't know anything they were saying, but I was able mm-hmm. to follow the story just through the emotion I was feeling coming from the stage. Mm-hmm. So you can do that yeah, in the absolutely. arts. Absolutely. I do remember a little boy. Um, nobody liked him. He was filthy, oh. and he, oh. he never spoke. And, he was, and, and the teacher said, don't expect to get anything out of him. That's when and, you take your challenge on, right? Yeah, and um, you know, by the second week, he was writing, and then he would read his poems in the tiniest voice. And that's what I'm all about. I mean, I think that's what Viola and Julius and the other producer on this project, John Capetta, are about, which is giving voice to the voiceless. And that doesn't always mean poor people. It doesn't always mean, uh, it, it tends to mean marginalized people, but marginalized people come in many shapes and cultures and races, you know. Have you had a conversation with Viola Davis? I have not, but I have with Julius, and I, I really am so excited about what they are about oh. in terms of the company, which is about giving back and creating story. I mean, stories create empathy between us. So, you know, my my writing is all about building bridges <coughs> between people, and I think that's what their company is about. Yeah. It really is. Again, as I said, especially at this time, I mean, not to get too political, but, you know, especially this week with the story coming out about our, our vice president's wife, who chose to teach at a school that bans uh, gays, gay couples, mm. gay families, gay whatever. And I thought to myself, hmm, interesting uh, message there, mm-hmm. you know, at a time when we really un- need to unify. Mm-hmm. Um, do you mind if I ask your thoughts on that? 
You know, I have been in a bubble in rehearsals, so I haven't followed that particular story. Yeah. She's getting a lot of slack for yeah. it, and I thought, wow, it's just it's just a shame that a school would be so insulated. You know, that they yes. don't let in other ways of life. Yeah, um, I think that's what a lot of people are I mean, saying. I think the world is changing, and they you know, whenever, some aren't changing with it. Yes, I think there's always going to be an incredible backlash when there is change. I do think the change is going to win out. Let's talk a little bit about STEAM. What is that? That incorporates what? Science, technology, um, engineering, arts, and math, right? Yes. That's what it stands for? Yes. I mean, what is STEAM? Is it like a... So STEM was the term, and now we're adding... Uh, I'm not, but they are adding in the word arts. Um, that it's not just about math and science. That arts help scientists think creatively. Look, if you're and a doctor, out of the box. how many times have we been at a doctor's office and there's not that bedside manner that we're all hoping mm -hmm. for? And very often, because I studied English literature and art history mm -hmm. myself, and I, I truly love the theater. Um, and I often said to myself, people studying in pre-med, they need to take a few arts courses because mm -hmm. it expands the mind, you know, because maybe the other side of the brain isn't as developed as the medical side. Yes. So you're so right about that. I yeah. mean, blending this, I'm glad that people have finally realized we need to blend the two. We do. And, you know, the science and the arts are so alike. That's what I discovered when I was writing this play about so many scientists that it's creative thinking, it's thinking out of the box, it's <clears throat> inspiration, it comes at you at the strangest times, and that's art as well. So, um, Yes, it is. What were you yeah. like as a kid? What was I like? Yeah. I was extremely curious. I was told I had enormous eyes and they used to follow everybody. And uh, I wanted to know everything and be into everything. That's why you're yeah. a writer. And yes. um, tell me a little bit about your early career. You, I know you were a teacher, mm -hmm. but... Um, yeah, so I didn't start out as a teacher. The, the writing led to me being a teacher as well. But um, I actually got out of Yale as an undergrad, and mm -hmm. I was a philosophy uh, major with theater studies kind of minor. And then um, I wrote a play, and it went to the O'Neill National Playwrights Conference. And I had written some short stories that were already published. And I had that theater minor, so I had written at Yale. And... Uh, and then um, that the went to the O'Neill. You know, the best drama schools out there. I mean, well, it's a playwrights conference, and it became a school to me. Yeah. And then uh, my second play went to the O'Neill as well. Wow. And then that play was produced at a very big theater at the time, a re big regional theater. And then I got a grant, so it felt like the universe was telling me to become a playwright. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. And then, of course, the universe punishes you. Um, Doesn't the universe always punish us? Yeah, I mean, it makes it really easy, so it lures you in. And then it makes you decide that I'm going to stick with this when it gets hard. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. A takeaway for us. Um, people, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about going, but I haven't seen it yet, so mm -hmm. I can't quite comment. But what's a takeaway to sort of get people excited about going to the theater, to the Odyssey Theater, to seeing this play? Well, the play is very funny because um, I, I'm not interested in telling a story that isn't also funny. It's, right. You've got to go to the theater yes. and have an experience. Yes. If you feel like you're hit over the head, it's like, oh, my God. And it's about people. It's about two people, and it's about their relationships. So even though they come from different worlds and there's science in it, it's really not... That's not the primary thing. It's about how two people relate to each other. And I also want to say uh, my collaborators are phenomenal. Medallion uh, Rahimi is the actress, and she's a wonderful actress who's been featured on a lot of television, very young. Phenomenal. Recently out of UCLA. Mm -hmm. And then um, Jeff Marlowe, who has been at La Jolla Playhouse, South Coast Rep numerous times with incredible directors, and worked with um, Tom Hanks in Henry IV. So Beautiful. I consider myself very lucky. How many in the cast? Two. The two of them. Mm -hmm. So that's a heavy thing. That's incredible. But it's it's got a lot of funny moments, you said. Absolutely. You know, it's topical. It's got funny moments. And anything that Viola Davis is behind mm -hmm. um, and her production company, I, I really support because I think she's so ahead of herself and she's really making a lot of changes. So you've got an incredible cast. You've got, you know, a great um, person in Vic Mm -hmm. Also directing this, you've got Viola, you've got you, the Odyssey Theater. What a, what an incredible thing! Takeaway for all of us is what? Quick takeaway to get us thinking. Come to get you thinking. Um, 
I don't know. I just think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So please look it up at the Odyssey Theater. Uh, Laura Maria Sensabella. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. I'm very much looking forward to Saturday night. It's 8 o'clock, right? Are there still tickets for Saturday? Not for Saturday, but for other performances. Yeah, so yeah. please look it up online. And for people who want to get in touch with you, I don't know, you inspire them. How can they get to How can they find you? Um, they can find me on the uh, National New Play Exchange. Okay. Yes. How about any yeah. social media? Are you involved with that um, a little bit? I'm on Facebook. All right. Maybe yes. if they really need to or want to, they can message you. You know, because very often we'll have a student who will see someone like you and say, "Wow, she really inspired me to write something." Mm -hmm. So, is it okay if they reach out to you? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Thank okay. you so much for being here. And everybody, please go to the Odyssey Theater. It's playing through February 17th mm -hmm. here in Los Angeles. I'm really looking forward to it. Next week. I'll report back after I've been to the opening. I can't wait. And um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Deborah Cobalt Live. We're live on Facebook. We're on YouTube. And you can hear us on iHeartRadio and also Apple Podcasts. Thank you. We'll see you next time.